Right, Angela Cornell, you know, you're stepping into this big new job at Sky News. Uh, one of the issues that really came to the fore this year, the issue of Gladys Liu, the, the Chinese con connections, a pretty poor interview with our colleague Andrew Bolt. Um, we still don't know, we haven't had her get up in the parliament and go through the list of organisations she has been connected to in some time. There's supposedly, in the bowels of the Liberal Party in Victoria, an audit going along. That's been months in the, in the waiting and we still don't know if we'll hear from her at all before parliament rises on Thursday. But there's some link to a donor connected to, to the Chinese Communist Party that's come to light today. Yeah, and, and that's another story, I guess, in the nine newspapers concerning uh, her linking a donor up, I think, with, with Greg Hunt, and they've since been accused of all manner of corruption and all manner of things. And, you know, there are links there, I think, again, to the Chinese Communist Party. So, I guess, again, it's kind of it's guilt by association rather than the smoking gun, you know? But uh, the more this swells around Gladys Liu, the worse for her, and I guess the worse for Scott Morrison. I mean, he was out there saying you've got absolutely nothing to worry about here. And it, let's hope for his sake he's right. Um, but, uh, I mean, journalists will keep digging around this, this issue, that's for sure. And with a two-seat majority, this is what happens. I mean, we saw it with the Craig Thompson story under Julia Gillard. There's just much more, you know, George Christensen stories around him when there was a one-seat majority for Turnbull. Like, it, it just... It, every individual MP's uh, the problems or faults suddenly become larger than life. Uh, they become much, uh, a much larger deal than they ordinarily would be, albeit, you know, because of national security, this was always going to be a big deal. But it's a bigger deal uh, in terms of every MP's behaviour in the government at the moment. And China's been the story of the year, really, Renee. How much do you think it actually percolates down to, to voters? Uh, look, look, I just think this time of the year, and this issue, they're just not paying much attention at all. But just going back to Andrew's point about, um, uh, about George Christensen, let's not forget George Christensen increased his margin after the Labor Party campaigned on him being the member for Manila. So I wouldn't, you know, w with Gladys Liu, there, there's no guarantee this is hurting her. This actually could be in some cases helping her, depending on how she handles it from here on in. Um, now, I, I think it's end of year. People don't really want to talk about politics. They want to go on their end-of-year holidays. No one's paying attention. And this is why I think the Angus Taylor stuff is also falling flat. Yeah, OK. And just on another issue, and you've got a huge military uh, audience, membership in Queensland, uh, lots of bases up there. Where do you think people are on the issue of Royal Commission? Do they think that's just pushing the issue away and they want help to to provide the ADF uh, or retired members of the ADF immediately to our veterans? Or do you think they want us to really get to the bottom of what's causing this, this pretty horrific spike, particularly in young men leaving the military in terms of suicide? Yeah, it's a really good question. I, I caught up with some veterans um, this week and they were the same veterans who met with Scott Morrison. They don't want a Royal Commission. And it, it's very hard to say this publicly and, and it's a very controversial thing to say. But a lot of them argue that people who join the army, they join the army for their tribe. And that usually means they don't have a great um, home life. And their argument is their parents don't understand really what they were going through when they took their lives at the time. Now, it's a very controversial thing to say, but they believe there's a better way to spend that money than to have a royal commission. And that's why I think Scott Morrison is, is not convinced either way as yet. I mean. You know, when you've got mothers who are, who are grieving, saying we need a Royal Commission, it's very hard to stare that down. But at the same time, when you've got people who have fought, fought for the country, saying let's not do this, these are the re this is the issues that we need to fix, that's also quite compelling. Yeah, look, I have to say, in the, the time that I went to a lot of the military funerals of soldiers uh, in and around the Afghanistan conflict, there was a level of dysfunction in a lot of the families, and you're right, they, they often joined the military, or at least found in the military, this camaraderie and this sense of family that they hadn't perhaps had before in their life and a purpose. And of course, when they leave that, that's where the dislocation occurs. Even if they get a job, even if they end up with a family and marry, etc., themselves, what they have left behind, they miss enormously. And that's, that's part of the transition, mm -hmm. I think, that we need to be watching. Where do you think this will all go, um, Andrew Cornell? Do you think we will see a Royal Commission? Well, he's called a Royal Commission into everything else. So well, he I and can his see... predecessors. <laughs> and his predecessors. But, yeah, I know. But I, so I can see why people would feel they have a good, whether that be newspapers or, or people advocating 
they feel they have a good chance of getting a royal commission out of a federal government at the moment. And I mean, he hasn't ruled it out, has he? And the Albanese supporting it, I think, was a reasonable development for those campaigning. I mean, I think we saw um, uh, Tony Abbott support the Child Sexual Abuse Royal Commission shortly before Julia Gillard announced it. So that, that's always helpful uh, to, to those fighting for such a cause. I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if come, say, February, he calls one, put it that way. Yeah, I guess the difference there with the child sexual abuse was it was a lot of institutions and organisations and charitable entities that were responsible, and churches, responsible for the abuse. The issue of veterans sits squarely inside the federal government's purview constitutionally, in a funding sense, has a minister for it, has a whole goddamn department that is supposedly mm. resolving these issues. So if anyone can fix it, it's the feds. And if they don't know how to fix it, well, they should. It's not as if they have to go searching necessarily for an answer. I guess it's the coordination of all the various elements that need to come together. Anyway, this will be something he'll, uh, he'll ruminate on over Christmas and come back, I'm sure, in the new year with a response. Andrew Clennell, Renee Valaris, thanks very much for your time.